With Draft becoming more and more of a reality inside of Pokemon Unite, there are 14 Pokemon that you need to be able to compete in Draft, so I thought it would make sense to give you the 14 Pokemon that every Pokemon Unite player should be able to play. And why I picked each Pokemon, I will go over, but it'll make a lot of sense once I kind of give you the basics of what you should be looking for in a team composition in Pokemon Unite. Let's do this, Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw. So I wanted to start with a look at our map really quick here and just a basic idea of what you should expect to have on a team in Pokemon Unite. Not every single team is going to look like this and it's okay that some might look a little different from this exact setup and you could have good results with them, but I'm just gonna give you a good idea of what a team looks like in the game and why I'm telling you these specific Pokemon are great to learn. I'm sure now that you're at the point where you're running into some draft games and things like that, or if you're a new player, you probably have noticed that not all attackers are the same, not all defenders are exactly the same, supporters, all-rounders, speedsters. There are slightly different roles inside of all of these classes right here. In Pokemon Unite, when you try to think of building a five-person team, you could kind of go with the idea of an attacker, defender, supporter, all-rounder, speedster, but really it's a little more complex than that. When looking for a team composition in Pokemon Unite, you really have five things. A top lane carry Pokemon that scales pretty well. These are things that are oftentimes all-rounders, but not only all-rounders. You have supporters that are often played in the top lane along with this Pokemon, running an experience share. This is to make sure that that top lane carry Pokemon can get all the XP they need so that they can start winning the match. Winning the top lane is very, very important. Your top lane supports are oftentimes things like Eldegar, Hoopa, Blissey, Pokemon like this. You have a central area Pokemon, and there are a lot of different ways this can go. Oftentimes, this is a Pokemon that doesn't do particularly well in lane, but scales very, very well with a lot of experience. Speedsters fit the bill pretty well, especially because a high-level speedster can really do a lot of damage to your opponents. You kind of need a big level advantage when it comes to speedsters, but also Pokemon like auto attackers, you know, Cinderace, Greninja, some of your mages like Gardevoir, things like that, do very, very well in that central area. Again, this is an area, also known as the jungle by the way, where you give your Pokemon a lot of free experience that they don't have to contend with the enemy to get. You then have your bottom path that is made up of a tank, which is oftentimes, but not always, a defender Pokemon. This is a Pokemon that does very, very well without a ton of experience, usually has some solid secure moves. Think about Slowbro with Water Gun, and oftentimes also runs an EXP share to power up the lane partner that it has. Basically, inside of Pokemon Unite, ideally, you've got a supporter in the top path with EXP share and a defender in the bottom path with EXP share. This is not always the case, but it really will help your team power up the carry Pokemon. The final role that you often have in Pokemon Unite is a bottom lane attacker Pokemon. Now this isn't normally something like Decidueye, however it could be Decidueye, or Duraludon, however it could be Duraludon. It's more often usually a ranged special attacker Pokemon. Think something like Espeon or Mew in that bottom path. These Pokemon do very, very well at securing, don't need an insane amount of XP, but do well if they get a lot of it. So you're gonna see a lot of Pokemon like that. So when you're drafting, you're looking to fill all of these roles. Now a team, again, could look something like this. A team could have something like Slowbro in their bottom path alongside an attacker like, ooh, let's say Espeon down here. Really powerful lane, both of them good early. Up in our top path, we could have something unbelievably strong like a Buzzwool paired up with, oh, let's say a Clefable in our top path up here. Both have pretty good secure. The Clefable can give a ton of experience over to Buzzwool. And your central area, we decided to put Cinderace in there as a ranged attacker that does need a lot of experience to get online. The enemy team could look similar, but obviously could have some differences as well. They're gonna have Trevenant in the bottom path uh, alongside, let's see a fun attacker for the Mew. That sounds like a very fun path for them to have. Then their central area, they decide to go with something more like a speedster. So they're gonna go ahead and throw, a uh, Meowskarat is not on this thing. They're gonna go ahead and throw Leafy on here in that center, which could actually make a lot of different interesting plays right because it can run to a lane very fast and then in their top path we're gonna go ahead and give them Eldegoss and the old school top path Pokemon Lucario 
these two teams are looking pretty solid here for a match of Pokemon Unite. Uh, again, they've got a strong carry Pokemon in that central area. On the side of our purple team, a Pokemon that needs a lot of experience. On the side of our orange team, a Pokemon that doesn't, but still does pretty well. If you didn't end up having Leafy on, and I just threw that off the map a little bit right there, you could put Zorark in that central area. Pretty strong level five, but does need a lot of XP. But you get the basic idea of what you're looking for in a team right here. Throughout this video, I'll talk more about why you see these Pokemon, where you see them, but this is just a good rule of thumb of what will give you a really nice balanced team composition. And inside this video, you're going to have multiple Pokemon in each one of these roles that you can get good with. That way, if you get thrown into a draft match and let's say you wanna play Dodrio in the central area, but someone else is very dead set on taking their Meowskerata there, you have a lot of different options to play other roles inside the game. It's gonna make you a better Pokemon Unite player. It's gonna give you a better understanding of what's going on in the game. And hopefully you're gonna have more fun, exciting matches because you have a way better team composition. And oftentimes the team with the better team comp does win a game of Pokemon Unite. I'm sure you've been there where the enemy team has a defender and a supporter and your team has a whole lot of squishy attackers and it can be a real miserable game. So now that we've gone over the basics of team composition inside of Pokemon Unite, let's go ahead and start talking about the 14 Pokemon you need to know how to play. I'm gonna give some held item suggestions, some move suggestions, maybe some emblem suggestions, but I have a full emblem video on my channel where I'll go more into emblems. So in general, I probably won't hit a ton of emblem talk inside this video. I'm gonna start this list with Pokemon in the bottom path. So that sort of tank defender role that you'll see inside of Pokemon Unite. And consider that a lot of players are playing this game free to play or mostly free to play maybe they buy a couple pokemon they really like i'm going to try to give you a lot of options that the game gives you for free that work really really well that being said let's start with slowbro Slowbro is an amazing option for that bottom path tank defender role and it's great because the game gives it to you for free basically the second you start playing Pokemon Unite. It's been one of the best defenders in the game for the longest time and that really hasn't changed too much. While there are some defenders that outpace it in some ways, you will never be upset that you have a slow bro on your team. A great build for your defender here is going to be an EXP share, a resonant guard, and then a third item of your choice. I think there are a few great options here. Buddy Barrier is particularly good if you're not running into an Umbreon on the other side. Choice Specs is actually a great item for Slowbro, so it can get a lot of those last hits and secures early with Water Gun. Focus Band, another excellent item for this Pokemon. Your Supporter and Defender, if you can, you're gonna wanna run a level 20 experience share just so you can more easily get your allies leveled up and not have to worry too much about farming yourself. Depending on personal preference and the enemy team composition, I think you can run either Surf or Scald and then Amnesia. Telekinesis is also not a bad option, Option, but I think playing that more stereotypical defender role, you're going to want to try to tank as best as you can, and Amnesia helps you a little bit better with that. Your job as Slowbro is to be with your ally, help by auto-attacking enemies and wild Pokemon, and then make sure you get good with your secure tool, Water Gun. Once you understand how to last hit with Water Gun, the most important thing really inside of Pokemon Unite in the laning phase, last hitting all of the wild farm, you are able to devastate your opponents. You as Slowbro don't need a ton of experience, you only need to get to level four to get your first move, and your ally is gonna get massively powered up by being around you. Slowbro makes one of the most dominant lanes inside of Pokemon Unite, and you're really going to feel your allies' appreciation for you running a Pokemon like this. As far as a battle item, some people like running Potion on a build like this. I think Eject Button is also pretty amazing so you can land your Unite move. A big element of this Pokemon is making sure that you have your Unite move ready to go for a few of the big fights most specifically Rayquaza, and to try to use your Unite move when your allies can take a you know huge advantage of it, hopefully on one of the enemy carry Pokemon. So if they've got a Meowskarada or Dodrio or something like that, you see it in the big fight, you hit it with your slow beam, your allies are around. I mean, it's pretty much a game win if you can pull that off correctly. Slowbro, one of the best Pokemon that you can learn, especially if you don't have a defender in your repertoire. The second Pokemon that you need to know how to play is another one that the game gives you for free, an amazing bottom path defender, and that is Crustle. 
Your build's gonna look very similar to Slowbro in that you're going to be running an EXP share, a Resident Guard, and then kind of a third item of your choice. Again, Buddy Barrier is really solid, but if you're running into something like an Umbreon, like watch out, you do not wanna be running that. You're just gonna give them more shields to steal away from you. But in general, there are a few good options for this. Focus Band is very good. I could see you even running something like an Attack Weight if you like to stack on a Pokemon like this. In general, especially when you're inside some of these draft games, you're not going to be playing as much of a kind of solo carry role that you would have in other games. You're gonna be looking to fill the role that you do very well. And for that reason, I think things like Focus Band and stuff work very, very well for this Pokemon. Your build is going to be Rock Tomb X Scissor. So your job is not to KO all of the enemy Pokemon necessarily, even though sometimes you will. Your job is going to be to set up massive, massive plays for your team. In fact, most defenders, that is your job. Setting up huge plays for your team to make sure that you can win all of these big fights. And Crustle does that really well. Rock Tomb slows your opponents at range. It traps them. If you hit them with X Scissor, you push them. If you push them into a wall, including your own Rock Tomb, you stun them for a long, long time. Crustal is just a set up machine and if played correctly, your opponent, your opponents will be devastated by the positions that you put them in. Especially some of the later fights inside the game, you can hide in some of the tall grass the moment they walk in, you exit them into the wall, right into your unite move, stun them again. Like you can set up some crazy, crazy stuff with Crustle. Without question, one of the best defenders in the game right now, which is cool. It got buffed a little while back. And it's great because it's awesome for free to play players. They have an a excellent option to play that bottom path tank role. Our next Pokemon is a bit of a hybrid, the third Pokemon on our list. You can definitely play it as a bottom path defender. You can also play it as a top lane carry. You could, in theory, even play it as a central area jungle Pokemon. And I think that's the reason it's on this list, even though it is not a Pokemon that you get for free. This Pokemon is Blastoise. Truly one of the best things about getting good with Blastoise is it really does fill almost every single role inside of Pokemon. You know, it's crazy, crazy good in just about any position you put it in. I'm gonna talk about it briefly in the bottom path, top path. Again, you could also play it in the center. The thing about this is you can play Surf Hydro Pump in the bottom path really well as a defender Pokemon. You could also play Rapid Spin Water Spout in the top path. You could play Surf Pump in the top path because you can play this Pokemon kind of as an all-rounder with that move set as well. It's just so unbelievably versatile, has really never not been powerful, has one of the best Unite moves inside of Pokemon Unite, and plays the lane, or as the game calls it, the path, like an absolute monster. It attacks at range, it shoves, it stuns, you last hit really, really well. It's just so incredibly good. If you're playing it as more of a defender in a tank slot, I would run something like EXP Share, Resonant Guard, and Slick Spoon probably on this Pokemon. You may also be able to get away with something like a focus band. Slowbro before could also run something like Slick Spoon. Slick Spoon is just insanely good. Blastoise I feel like ends up dealing a little more damage than Slowbro unless Slowbro is running Scald of course so I think Slick Spoon works pretty well on this Pokemon. If you're running this as a rapid spin water spout Pokemon I personally really like stacking on Blastoise so I run something like Slick Spoon, special attack specs and then either Resonant Guard, Focus Band, or Energy Amp, like leaning into the damage with Energy Amp right there. Again, good just about anywhere. You can even play it central if you absolutely have to. I mean, it's level five gank is not the best thing in the game, but quickly getting it level seven, you'll be very, very powerful for this Pokemon. So yeah, Blastoise is just an absolute monster in this game. A few key things to remember with Blastoise is make sure you start to understand how your last hitting and boosted attack works. So your last hitting is often done with water gun. Sometimes you water gun, boosted attack, skull bash, you can do a lot to get that last hit, but your water gun is an extremely good last hitting tool. At the same time, when your boosted attack hits, it lowers the cooldowns of your other moves. So just kind of feel the flow of that combo where you're hitting with your water gun, skull bash into your boosted so that you get your moves a little bit faster right there and feel free to be very aggressive in lane with this Pokemon because it can 
punish enemies so incredibly hard. You can anti-stack against them. You can run to the other side and stack and push them away. Blastoise really is so good, even when it is Squirtle. And then finally, once you're Blastoise, your Unite move is not on the craziest cooldown of all time. So I think you get to use it a lot. Make sure you're running an eject button. Make sure that you position yourself to Unite in some of those big fights. And you're gonna have great games with Blastoise, whether you're in the top or bottom path. Our fourth Pokemon on our list is also going to be another hybrid Pokemon that you could play in either the top or bottom path, and that is going to be Trevenant. Trevenant recently got some really nice buffs, even though it got a nerf to its wood hammer. Trevenant is a weird Pokemon and a very unique Pokemon in that all four of its moves played in any combination are insanely good. There really is not a combination that you would see on Trevenant where you'd go, that doesn't really work. No, it all works really, really well. Again, a lot like Blastoise, except you wouldn't play it in the center really ever. This Pokemon can fit so many different roles on a team, whether it's sort of that bottom path defender or that top path carry with so many different builds. Trevenant is one of those Pokemon right there with Blastoise where if a player is asking me what Pokemon should I buy, Trevenant and Blastoise are really high up on my list. It's really hard to say what build to recommend right here. Honestly, go with what your heart desires, I would say. If you're looking for something that disrupts the enemy the most, it's going to be something like Wood Hammer and Horn Leech. If you're looking for something that is just really difficult for the enemy to deal with, helps focus down their carries and makes you a bit of a carry in your own right, that's going to be something like Curse Horn Leech or Curse Pain Split. And then at the same time, if you want sort of a hybrid of that where you're still displacing and stunning your enemy but you also have like a crazy amount of sustain, that's going to be something like Wood Hammer Pain Split. Again, there is not a bad Trevenant build. I would say, in general, I think Trevenant is one of the better Pokemon in the game to stack on. In fact, you could not only stack your attack weight, you could also stack an Aos cookie on this Pokemon. So much of what Trevenant does is based on having a massive HP pool and a great attack stat. There are so many good held items for this Pokemon. Again, Attack Weight, Aos Cookie, Weakness Policy, Focus Band, Resonant Guard. You can even run EXP Share on something like this. Trevenant does so much damage that there are times where I don't know if EXP Share is the absolute best item for it, but if you are looking to power up your ally in lane, it would be good. If you're playing Trevenant in the top path, you wouldn't run EXP Share. You would let your supporter do that. If you're playing Trevenant in the bottom path, depending on what you're paired with, you may run on EXP share to get that Pokemon powered up. Their Pokemon like Espeon probably don't need to run EXP share, even though it would be helpful. That thing gets strong at level four, it's doing great. Maybe if you're down there with something weaker in lane like Glaceon that needs its level six, then you might wanna run an EXP share. But in general, you can just go heavy into damage with this. You can go heavy defensively. Really whatever you do with Trevenant is great right now. We're gonna move away from our defender tanky Pokemon here for a little bit to start talking about a couple supporters inside the game. And I think a great one to learn, one of the best Pokemon for new players to learn, but just an insanely good Pokemon in general is Eldegoss. Eldegoss is just absolutely incredible. It was the first Pokemon I think I got in Pokemon Unite. Back when I started playing the game, they let you select one of five roles. I think that's changed now when you come into the game, but I selected Eldegoss as one of my first Pokemon, and I do not regret it. An insane supporter, so good in lane, so good at helping your allies, but also dishes out a lot of damage and really annoys your opponents. For items, EXP share I think is a must on this Pokemon. I, I really don't see a reason not to run it, honestly. Muscle Band is incredibly good. I also like Rapid Fire Scarf on this, but you could flex that final item with lots of different things. You could play a Buddy Barrier, you could play a Focus Band, Resonant Guard is extremely good on this Pokemon. There are a lot of good options for Eldegoss. I would just start, sort of see what you like in that final spot. I personally kind of like Rapid Fire Scarf just so I'm extra annoying in lane early. If my opponents try to stack or overextend a little bit, you really punish them with your auto attacks. 
As far as your build, I would say is either Pollen Puff Cotton Guard or Pollen Puff Cotton Spore. Cotton Spore, I feel like works really well if there are enemies that like to dive in on your team and you wanna put them in a bad position where when they come in to fight, they're gonna get knocked up and they're gonna to have to deal with that. Cotton Guard, on the other hand, is just great. It's a team-wide shield that also heals your allies. It's a very meaty shield as well, and it will help you win some of the bigger fights inside of Pokemon Unite. With Eldegoss, I think there are a few things to keep in in mind one you are like a gatling gun in lane early it's unbelievable how good you are and how annoying you could be at shutting your opponents down if they overextend if they push towards your goal you can just a press them all the way home and oftentimes especially if your ally is there to help you can pick up a big unexpected ko early moving later into the game of course you're going to want to continuously heal your allies and at the same time you're going to look for big opportunities with your Unite move. I think Eldegoss's Unite move is sometimes too often saved for maybe a big objective secure or something like that when you're up in the air like hoping to get Rayquaza or something. You actually want to try to use this when you see one of your allies is possibly being dove on and in trouble. You head up into the air, you crash down on them, healing them and hurting the enemy and pushing them away. You have no idea how many team fights you can save with Eldegoss doing crazy damage to your opponents, saving like a squishy carry. You know, they're diving in on your Guard of War right now and you're able to just land there, keep guarding alive and at the same time push them away you will be the hero of your team playing a pokemon like this i have to say i love supporters and defenders inside pokemon unite oftentimes these players are the unsung heroes of the game and if you want to be a player that is going to not only be unsung but honestly might be sung because your damage is going to be insane too it is eldegoss ld is perfect if you haven't learned ld i highly recommend you get good with this pokemon Get good. The next supporter I'm adding to this list is Blissey. But let's face it, there are a few supporters that could easily fill this slot. Clefable is an obvious choice as well. Blissey is that stereotypical, I am healing you healer for the team with one of the craziest Unite moves inside the game. You could definitely play this in the top path. There are also times where this could kind of fill the role, kind of, of a bottom path tank, as long as you also have something really, really bulky in the top path. Like if someone's deciding to play Tree as more of an all-rounder Trevenant in that top path, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna play Blissey, tank, bottom. Uh, you have good security early with pound and your healing is off the charts and again your unite move is a game-changing savior unite move in some of the big battles clefable another good option in this spot but i had to pick one and i went with blissey and i just man i love love blissey there are two big builds for this pokemon one really exists to empower things like Cinderace and Mewtwo Y and stuff like that. That's the helping hand safeguard build. Also, if you see your opponents have an insane amount of crowd control and you have Pokemon that have a lot of dive that maybe need help with that, I could totally get it. But in general, I would recommend the Egg Egg build. You're going to want to run Soft Boiled and Egg Bomb. Not only can you displace your opponents with Egg Bomb, you knock them up, you keep them out of Hoopa portals, you can secure a last hits on wild Pokemon and on objectives. You've seen a ton of Blissey secure with an egg bomb. It happens. I've played a lot of Blissey. It has a great secure tool built in and it just gives you more opportunities with healing because it lets you stack more reserve uses of soft boiled when you run it with egg bomb. So that I would say is the build from a move set perspective. Your items are going to be something like EXP share, probably a buddy barrier or an energy amplifier. And then your third item is really up to you. I like stack Stacking on this Pokemon a lot. It makes your Egg Bomb strong, but really the thing is it makes your healing incredibly powerful. So special attack specs I think are a good option for this Pokemon if you do like stacking. If you don't like stacking and you simply say, I don't want to deal with that, I'm just going to run, you know, an Energy Amp for my Unite move and I'm going to run a Buddy Barrier or I'm going to drop that Energy Amp even and run a Rescue Hood, even though I think that's maybe not the best choice. I think Wise Glasses might do a little better, but you get the idea. If you don't want to stack, I get it, but stacking is incredible on these healers. 
Fabler's. Clefable is the same way. If you can get six stacks on Clefable, it's so much better than having just a regular healing item in that slot. With Blissey, your early game is simple. Stay near your allies, help them secure a lot of the last hits with Pound. Pound is a great secure tool. And then once you start getting your healing, just make sure you are really on top of healing your allies and keeping them topped off and ready to fight. If you do this, you're having a great time as Blissey. Then you use your Unite move not only to save your allies, but do some crazy damage to your opponents. So I think it's important to just kind of notice who is diving in, who is getting dove on, and how can I help them best? So again, if you have something squishy on your team that the enemies want to exploit, like a Delphox maybe, you can use your Unite move to sort of dive back to them, protect them with this massive barrier and, you know, keep them alive throughout a big fight. Same thing can be used, you know, sort of on the other side, on the flip side, if you have an ally that loves to dive in against your opponents, you have a Metagross on your team or something like that. They're always up in the mix. You're throwing your soft boils, you're healing them, but then once they get a little deep, you throw that Unite move, you bowl all the way over, knocking your opponents up, doing tons of damage right there, and giving them that massive shield. Your Unite move with Blissey, as well as like Eldegoss that we talked about earlier, is one of the most game-changing, fight-changing Unite moves inside of Pokemon Unite. You would be foolish not to have it in a lot of these big engagements. Make sure you have it, and make sure you use it, especially at the Ray fight. The final supporter on my list is going to be Hoopa. Again, there really aren't bad options for supporters, but I do think Hoopa is so versatile that it's a great Pokemon to run. It sits up there in the top path, a lot like Eldegoss, but because you have Hyperspace Hole, which is the build you're primarily gonna wanna use in a more competitive environment, you are able to move your team to different objectives, move them between top and bottom path, depending on what your opponents are doing, and of course, use your Unite move to bring everybody down for a big fight. Your items are going to be EXP Share, Muscle Band, Resonant Guard, or drop that Resonant Guard and throw on a Rapid Fire scarf i personally love this build it is cheesy but at the same time you're just a menace early in lane you're hitting them all the time you're using astonish to stun them like you're just crazy crazy strong a lot like eldegoss as an early pokemon and eldegoss and as well as hoopa really do put your opponents in a very frustrating situation early on in the game. And oftentimes, if you can win your lane really hard in the top path and power up your top path carry, you're well on your way to winning a match inside of Pokemon Unite, especially in the competitive landscape. The top path is just so insanely important right now inside of Pokemon Unite. I think Hoopa used to be a little more complex and a little too difficult for some early players, but now that Hyperspace Hole isn't as punishing when your allies take it, uh, it has a low cooldown, and now that Phantom Force doesn't need to be attached to a target, I really do think Hyperspace Hole Phantom Force is a great move set for you to learn if you're learning to play Hoopa. Hoopa, just like a lot of Pokemon, is going to want to make sure that it has its Unite move at all of the big fights. A few things to notice, when you have a Hoopa on your team, your team can make some bolder macro decisions. They can make more decisions where they will run to an enemy tier two to score in a way where other allies could not do that. And what they're expecting from you as the team's supporter and Hoopa player is to notice that they're making a play like that. And if you have your Unite move available, use your Unite to pull them out of a horrible situation, right? Uh, in the final moments of the game, I don't like using Hoopa's Unite move too early unless it feels like we're winning the fight very hard and you just wanna you know, crush them with your big fist that fly from space, right? Otherwise, I actually like to be a little more conservative with my Unite move with Hoopa, just in case an ally or two goes down and I can bring them back as soon as they respawn on the map. That being said though, in general, Unite moves, use them at Ray, win a Ray fight, win the game. Our next Pokemon we're going to take a look at is a Pokemon that you can play either in the bottom path as an attacker or in the central area, and that is going to be Venusaur. Another Pokemon the game gives you for free, and Venusaur is actually a pretty solid choice inside the game right now. Oftentimes, in sort of a draft format or more competitive format, you're going to see this Pokemon as a solar beam expert trying to do a ton of damage from afar. I would recommend running either Solar Beam Giga Drain, or Solar Beam Sludge Bomb. Now, if the enemy has a lot of dive, a lot of ways to get to you, a lot of, you know, speedsters, they can get to you very easily or something like that, Leafeon on the enemy team, 
I would definitely run Giga Drain. Giga Drain is your way to survive in a lot of these crazier moments. If they don't have that, I could see you running Sludge Bomb, but I really do think Solar Beam Giga Drain is probably the move set to go with this Pokemon. There are options for a Petal Dance Giga Drain build on Venusaur, and it's really gonna depend on what you see on the enemy team, and if you think you're gonna be brawling with them a lot and would like to have these long extended fights. Oftentimes though, the combination of your Unite move and a Solar Beam are going to delete the enemies in such a way that that's what you're expecting out of your Venusaur. It also gives you one of the best secure tools in the entire game inside of your Solar Beam. Your move set is going to be that. Your items are going to be Amp, Spoon, and then a third of your choice. Rapid Fire Scarf is very good, especially if you're in lane. Choice Specs are good for extra damage. Focus Band is actually really good if the enemy looks like they're gonna dive in on you, but there are a lot of good options for that third slot, so I would leave it up to your personal preference. Especially if you're playing in that central area, your job is most likely gonna be doing a ton of damage with your Solar Beam. Now, if you have a lot of range on your team, you actually could swap over to the Petal Dance Giga Drain build, but in general, I think you're probably playing this this type of Venusaur. The nice thing about this Pokemon, again, good in the central area and also good in the bottom path as an attacker, something the game gives you for free, which again, I prioritize on this list. Our next option is really a central area only Pokemon. Ideally, you don't want to bring this Pokemon or these two Pokemon anywhere else. I'm going to count them as one though for the sake of our list, and that's going to be Cinderace and Greninja. Cinderace and Greninja are sort of the stereotypical and then a little more complex auto attackers of Pokemon Unite. Cinderace is probably the more basic one and then Greninja has a little more going on with it. More of sort of a dive in and fight close mechanic to Greninja, but Cinderace and Greninja are that ADC, that auto attack damage carry. You're tapping your A button and you're doing a ton of work on the enemy team. An easy build for both of these Pokemon is Muscle Band, Rapid Fire Scarf, and a Scope Lens. There are some other things that slot in, but just to keep it simple, you could run those items and do just fine on both of these. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Cinderace because I think it's more basic and more to the point. Greninja is a little higher skill probably than Cinder. Both of these Pokemon, however, need to focus a lot on their positioning inside of a fight in Pokemon Unite. In general, inside of a match in Pokemon Unite, you'll find your Cinderace here, hiding in this bush, waiting for Rayquaza to just get, you know, beat up here while your team goes down and they start ripping this apart. Again, positioning extremely important for something like Cinderace. Another bad place Cinderace could be is right here, just kind of fighting at the top of the Ray Pit, waiting for Pokemon on the enemy team to just kind of come up and KO you right there. Another bad place Cinderace could be is kind of over here, looking for KOs somewhere on this side of the map. In general, when you're playing a Pokemon like this, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using your team, especially your tanky defenders or supporters, as sort of a screen so that you can decide how you wanna fight your opponents. You're also gonna wanna make sure that you're not alone, so something like an Absol can't come behind and get you, you know, with like a massive sneaky KO. Your job is to know where the enemies are, understand kind of where they are inside of the vision of your allies. Hopefully your allies are providing you a nice bit of vision right here, right? And then using this as an opportunity to do damage at range until it is time for you to actually pull that trigger and run into this fight. If you KO a couple of these, I understand wanting to flame charge and blaze kick forward and try to clean up the fight. However, if it's a full squad against a full squad, you're just setting yourself up to either get picked off by, you know, one of their mages or even their speedster just finding you and gobbling you up. So again, you're not hanging out by yourself with Cinderace. You're not on the other side of your opponents. You're using your tanks as vision and a shield for you so you can do insane amounts of damage. Same thing for Greninja until Greninja needs to jump in, obviously, with its Unite Mover Surf. It's important to play Pokemon like this in the central area because they don't do particularly well in lane and they need a lot of experience to get online. As an overall rule, I would say you don't want many Pokemon on your team that need a ton of experience. Two is fine. If you have a top path Pokemon like Buzzwool and you have a central area Pokemon like Cinderace, that's enough for EXP hogs on one team. You don't need so many late scaling Pokemon. So I wouldn't pick something like Cinderace or Greninja 
ninja if you already have multiple things on the team that are you know tyranitars and things like that that they just need lots and lots of xp but if that central area is open your auto attackers are a great option Speaking of this central area, there are a lot of good Pokemon that can play in the central area. One that the game gives you for free alongside of Cinderace and Greninja is going to be Zeraora. Zeraora is not on the top of anyone's list. So I'm also going to talk about Meowskarata right here. If you want a new cool speedster that really gets the job done, Meowskarata is definitely it right now. Zeraora is fine, and if you're good with it, you can get a lot of value, but I understand people saying, Zera, eh, I get it. So if you want to learn something new and there's a Pokemon you're looking to pick up, Meowskarata is a great choice. They also recently gave Meowskarata for free, so you may have this Pokemon on your roster already. Previously, I would have said that Flower Trick Double Team was the definite way to go with this, but honestly, Trailblaze Night Slash is so incredibly good right now as well that I think you really can't go wrong with either move set on Meowskarata. It's just gonna depend on your play style and then sometimes what's going on with the enemy team. There are certain enemy teams that you can just see are going to be a nightmare to jump in on you know things that are really tanky have a lot of crowd control just put you in a position where you're just going to jump in and get ko'd over and over again against those teams i would say definitely go flower trick double team because you're just able to outplay them better however if they have a lot of squishier targets or a backline that you wouldn't be scared to dive into night slash trailblaze is a great option for meowskarata for zero aura on the other hand i personally like discharge more than i like wild charge just in general wild charge is a more specific single target mostly it does bounce around single target mostly assassin build and i personally think zero aura is stronger when played yes as an assassin that jumps in but also has that area damage that can help you secure objectives and secure multiple ko's on your opponents either speedster you go with right here i think you're going to want to play it in the central area get as much experience as you can hit your level five and then understand how to help your team best with a level five gank we haven't talked much about ganks in this video i'm going to talk briefly about it right now as a central area Pokemon, you're going to want to show up here for this fight right in the center of the top path or the bottom path at about 8 minutes 50 seconds. Obviously, this has the clock at 9 minutes right here. If you could, you want to make sure that you're here early, ready for this fight. Your job, of course, is to try to get as much of this wild Pokemon experience as you can, right? Get these Altaria, get this Swablu right there. But if you have a player advantage, or even if you're even, you're going to look for an opportunity as the higher level Pokemon here, our speedster Zara Aura, to KO your enemies. So some of the best things you can do is notice which lane on the enemy team looks like an easier target for a KO or where your allies feel like they're doing pretty well and make sure that you use your moves to, as best you can, pick up massive amounts of damage on your opponents, so hopefully your allies will move in and help you secure KOs. When you are a central area Pokemon, heading into a top or bottom path, you are giving your team an advantage by having your presence there. Make sure you try to use that to pick up KOs on your opponents, learn what is a great way to fight and what is not a great way to fight. For instance, if you see your opponents throw their moves at the wild Pokemon, you know, and you know that their moves are on cooldown for a second and you can dash in as something like Zara Aura and just start doing tons of damage to your enemies. That is a great, great opportunity for you to win that fight. And that's often what you're doing with these speedster Pokemon or just really any central area Pokemon. You're looking to make a big advantage happen in that lane. Meowskarata and Zara Aura both work really well when you have a level advantage and when you use their Unite moves. So I would prioritize getting as much experience as possible, like any central area Pokemon, really. And then when you go into these big fights, look for opportunities to unite and delete your enemies. Start with the squishy ones and then move through to the rest. Slowbro is kind of the last target on your list, you know? Get that Espeon first. Speaking of Espeon, Espeon is the next Pokemon on our list. There are a few great Pokemon for the bottom bottom path attacker role. Like any of the Eevees work pretty well just in general. You know, even Leafeon kind of plays this role, but I think Espeon is particularly good inside a path and does really well at every stage inside of Pokemon Unite, which is why it made my list. If you have Glaceon or something like that, sure, go for it. If you want to play Leafeon, you really can play it as an attacker inside that bottom path, but Espeon is fantastic. 
It secures great at range. Its stored power gives you insane amounts of mobility. Side beam has crazy secure and stun. Its unite move is unbelievably impactful inside of some of these bigger team fights. So I would highly recommend putting this Pokemon on your roster if you don't have something kind of like it already. The build's gonna be Choice Specs, Wise Glasses, Slick Spoon. The Choice Specs will just help you get a lot of those last hits early and it just continues to pump out special attack damage as you go. I would run an eject button because it works really well with your Unite move. You can reposition yourself and catch multiple members of the enemy team. In general, your job is simple. Out secure your opponents with your moves, which is easy to do with Espeon. Get a nice level advantage, win your lane, and help your team win the match. Another Pokemon that does this job really well that the game gives you for free is Alolan Ninetales. So let's talk about Alolan Ninetales. I think the Dazzling Gleam Aurora Veil build, while good, is very specific and oftentimes doesn't provide you exactly what your team is expecting out of that bottom path attacker. Blizzard Avalanche is insane damage, great secure, and an incredible amount of crowd control onto your enemies as well, and a lot like the Espeon that we just talked about a moment ago, is a Pokemon that gets really good at level four and is honestly good at level three. There is so much value in Pokemon Unite to winning your lane early, doing your job to win your lane early and not be a Pokemon that needs a ton of XP to scale. Espeon, all the Eevees are a great example, and Alolan Ninetales is another really, really strong attacker for that bottom path. So if you don't wanna pick up something new and you just wanna focus on something the game gives you for free, Blizzard Avalanche Ninetales is great. You can play it with the same kind of move set, excuse me, same kind of items that you would play on an Espeon. You can do Wise Choice Spoon for something like this. There are some other options here. I know some people like to run a Focus Band. I find this Pokemon to be so squishy that you really just need to start to understand how to use your Blizzard and then Avalanche as well as a tool to push your opponents away when they come in to dive. So you hit them with that Blizzard right into an Avalanche, create that combo, and then hit your Unite move as well. And it kind of deletes a lot of the Pokemon that are looking to take you out. For our next Pokemon on the list, I wanna talk about some top path Pokemon that really just feel like full on top path dominant Pokemon. And one of them is going to be Buzzwool. Buzzwool is in my opinion, probably the best Pokemon in the game, or at least in consideration for its job, its role. There really isn't much that does it better than Buzzwool, that top path carry. The thing about Buzz is it's good at every single moment inside the game, kind of like an evolution. It doesn't need to evolve. It only needs to hit level five to get one of the most powerful moves inside of Pokemon Unite. It has incredible crowd control. It has incredible last hit and secure with Fell Stinger. Its Unite move is an execute. Buzzwool is just the peak when it comes to Pokemon Unite. Now, here's the thing. Playing inside of Draft, you often might find Buzzwool to be banned out, which is why I have a lot of other options on this list for Pokemon that you could learn to play. Buzzwool is also not free, so this is something that you're going to need to pay either coins or gems to pick up. I can understand someone saying, I would love to take Buzz, but I think Buzz is oftentimes banned, so I'll look for something else. In general, it would be good to be good with this because if they give it to you, man, they just gave you such a powerful option for the team. There are a few great choices for items. A lot of people like running a focus band on this Pokemon so it survives longer in some of those crazy engagements and then superpower gives you another shield. I personally really love double stacking on this thing. Attack weight, Aos cookie. You could run either a focus band, float stone, muscle band. It's kind of that final item. There are a lot of good choices for Buzzwool. I think an eject button also is pretty important because you're gonna be able to eject and create buzzwool combos out of absolutely nothing. I, I There's so much to say positive about this thing. Your early secure with Felstinger and a full muscle gauge is truly bananas. You are a lane bully. And then once you hit five, you can just displace your opponents in absurd, absurd ways. I feel like this list wouldn't be complete without acknowledging the elephant in the room. And that is the fact that EX Pokemon are insanely good inside of Pokemon Unite. And each one of them kind of fills a slightly different role. But the truth is EX Pokemon are valuable in most every position inside the game. Even some like Mewtwo X can almost be played as sort of a tank or supporter role. They are really, really strong. 
The one that I am going to focus on for this video is going to be the one I see banned out the least, and that is going to be Zacian. I have noticed that Mewtwo and Maridon are pretty common bans inside of draft, even though I think it would be ideal to understand how to play these Pokemon. I think you're gonna get more value right now out of playing Zacian inside of draft. In fact, as a top path Pokemon, I think it's a pretty stellar choice to head up there. You could also play it in the central area, but I really look at Zacian as more of a top path Pokemon. I don't know that it even really outdoes Buzzwool early, but it's extremely powerful. Once you get it eight Aos Energy and Sacred Sword, you can just rip through your opponent. So out of all of the EX Pokemon, if I had to pick one to kind of lean into right now, it would probably be this one. Of course, if they're available, Mewtwo Y is a great top path Pokemon, even though you're not really putting an all-rounder up there. It's just Mewtwo Y is crazy. Mewtwo X is kind of the same thing. And then Maridon, I think, is probably most easily played in the central area or in the bottom path as an attacker. All of these Pokemon, extremely good. Just a little less common to see inside of draft. I hope this video was helpful. I wanted to have a lot of options for free-to-play players. You know, a lot of Pokemon that they unlock just by playing the game that can be great, great options for you inside of Draft. In general, I think it's really good to have a few Pokemon in every role that you're at least proficient with. It'll also help you be better with whatever your main is. There's no question that if you're the best Dragapult out there, we probably want you to play Dragapult inside this Draft game of Pokemon Unite. I mean, it's what you're best at, and it's a really strong Pokemon, but there are many times where we need you to play something else. I don't get to play my favorite Pokemon all the time, but I'll happily flex into a support or defender that I'm really good at to try to help the team win the game. And again, there's so much value into understanding how a Pokemon plays so that you can play against it. Being able to play everything a little bit is extremely, extremely good because you know exactly what that enemy Mewtwo is up to which, you know, is pressing the A button. But you get what I'm saying. The more you know about a Pokemon, the easier it is for you to counter it when you see it on the enemy team. I hope this was helpful. What's a Pokemon you think I missed? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. I love you, and I'll see you all next time. We did it.